Today, I'm gonna share one of my favorite one pot meals using Korean fish cakes called amuk. And we're gonna add noodles and vegetables and whoever you invite to share this one pot meal are gonna kiss and hug you because it is so delicious. The amuk broth, the fish cake broth, is so, so good that we Koreans, we literally put it in a cup and we drink it. That's how insanely delicious this broth is. And guess what? The broth is pretty simple to make. And I'm gonna show you how to make this dipping sauce for your fish cakes. You have it together? Oh, <laughs> it's so good. So if you've never had Korean fish cakes, you are missing out, my friends. So you need to watch this. 오늘의 레시피, 맛있는 어묵 전골 만들기. 오늘도 여러분들과 영원 함께 하겠습니다. Oh. Hi everyone, this is Helen and welcome to Modern Pepper. 안녕하세요, Modern Pepper의 Helen입니다. The ingredient list is also available in the description box below as well as the Korean ingredients that you could order online. So we're gonna start with prepping for our fish cake broth, amuk yuksu. And a must item is Korean radish. And we need three sections and cut it down the middle. Weighing in about 300 grams. And if you can't get Korean radish, you could use Japanese radish called taikan, or you could use the small round pink radishes that you could find at your local supermarket. But adding radish is a must, and I highly recommend using cream radish if you can get it. And we also need a medium-sized onion, and what I want you to do is cut it in half like so. One half, we're gonna add it to our broth, the other half, we're gonna add it to our hot pot later. For our broth, we're just gonna leave this as is. For our hot pot later, we're just gonna slice these guys up. We also need a quarter cup of Korean cooking wine called bidim. If you can't get this, just use any white wine that you would drink with dinner or just skip it if you can't have alcohol. And we need six crushed garlic cloves and we need two scallions. Now you could also use teppa, which are those large green scallions. What I wanna recommend is Brush the root end off. Do not cut it off because this also adds a wonderful flavor to your broth. So next time when you cut the root end off, save it in a plastic bag and freeze it and use it for your stock. We need about 12 to you know 16 peppercorns. And what I want you to do is get a tea bag if you have one and just put it in here. In a large pot, I want you to fill it with three liters of water. That's 12 cups of water. Place the lid and set your heat to high and bring it to boil. So the three liters will eventually yield you about less than two liters of our fish broth. So once the water comes to boil, we're gonna add our half onion, our Korean radish, our quarter cup of medium, our two green onions, our peppercorns, and our garlic cloves. Then to this, we're gonna add two dashi packs. Make sure to squish everything down. So we're gonna place the lid back on, and on high heat, we're gonna boil this for 10 minutes. What is inside our tashi pack? It contains dried anchovies, sea kelp, shrimp, and dried vegetables. Now you could order these online if you cannot get to a Korean supermarket. And I'll have the link in the description box below. Alternatively, you could use about 10 to 12 of these dried anchovies. They're called tashi mirchi and it must be the ones that are at least an inch and a half long. The longer in length, the better it is and more expensive it gets. And you could also add six of these small dry sea kelp pieces. Now, if you're gonna use mirchi dashi, you need to open up the center cavity right here, and the only thing you need to move is the dried intestines. Just take it out with your finger. This is the only part you need to get rid of. The head has so much flavor, so don't throw away the head. And 10 minutes later, let's take a look. Ooh la la, it looks good already. So at this point, the only item that we're gonna take out 
is our Tashi pack. So if you use the anchovies, take out the anchovies now because when you overcook the dried anchovies, it starts creating this like funky fish smell. And I like to only boil it for max of 10 minutes just to extract all the delicious flavors from our dried anchovy. Always, always squeeze to extract any of our liquid from our Tashi pack because this is like golden liquid. You shouldn't waste it. With your heat remaining high, we're gonna add two tablespoons of gukkanjang. So this soy sauce is for broths, but if you can't get gukkanjang, just use all-purpose Korean soy sauce, yangjoganjang. Then we're gonna add two shiitake mushrooms, pyogo baza, and with the stem removed, put it in our pot like so. And this is my secret tip. I'm gonna add two pieces of the amuk fish cake, weighing in about 110 grams to our pot now. This fish cake pieces right now that are going in, that's like our sacrificial pieces because fish cake, when you cook it, it really enhances the flavor of your broth. So we're gonna cook these guys out with the lid on for 10 minutes on high heat. All right, so it's been 10 minutes and let's take a look. Oh my God, it smells so good in here. What we're gonna do next is take everything out. Fish out everything from the pot and place it right here. We're gonna turn off our heat completely. The only two items that we're gonna use later for our hot pot are cooked radish and our cooked mushroom. These guys we could reuse or you could just enjoy eating it now for the chef. That's what I say. I want you to see how much of our broth reduced a lot, right? Now we're gonna season our broth. So I'm gonna add half a tablespoon of salt and I'm gonna add half teaspoon of beef dashita, sogogi dashita. You could also use mirchi dashita, that's dried anchovy bouillon powder or you could also use MSG, B1 instead. Now give it a stir and let's have a quick taste test. Oh, it smells so good. <laughs> oh, I mean, I could just literally drink this entire pot. It's so good. It's a little bit on the saltier side. That's what it makes it so also drinkable because it's just so tasty. It doesn't tastes fishy. Even though we made it with the fish cake, it just has this really nice salty seafood taste. That is why Koreans, we love amuk kungmul or yuksu. Mmm, really good. You know, if you like it a little bit less salty, add some hot water. If you like it a little bit saltier, add more salt. So the broth that we made, well, this one is about a liter and there's probably a half a liter left in this pot. Now onto our star ingredient, Korean fish cakes called amuk. It's spelled E-O-M-U-K on Google, but you know, <laughs> Google doesn't get it right all the time, obviously. Phonetically it's spelled amuk. Ah, mook, okay? Not all Asian fish cakes taste the same. Korean fish cakes taste completely different from other Asian fish cakes. So in order to make this dish, you have to use Korean fish cakes. If you must, because you can't get Korean fish cakes, you can substitute using Japanese fish cakes, but even then, it tastes different. When you go to a Korean supermarket, go to the freezer section, and you'll see so many selection of Korean fish cakes. Overall, no matter the shape, they all taste roughly the same. The higher priced ones, you could actually taste chunks of seafood, lower price point, you know, you're gonna get the smell and taste of seafood. And for those of you who ask, what is fish cake? It's basically sort of like spam of the sea a little bit, but not as bad as spam. But you take all the leftover fish parts at a processing center, they grind it up, and then you add flour, other seasonings, and you make it into a dough shape and then you deep fry it. So those, that's what fish cake is. The gourmet ones, oh boy, they are so good. They, you could literally see big chunks of seafood in there. So if you could use that even better. Grab one of the fish cake bags that comes in assortment of different sizes and shapes. Or you could also buy the ones that already come pre-skewered like so. So for our hot pot, we're gonna use eight 
fish cake skewers. But if you don't want to mix skewers, you don't have to. You can just cut them into whatever shape you want and throw it in the pot. I'm also using this pretty pink white fish cake that you can buy. Again, they all taste the same roughly. And push it in about halfway up. And then I'm gonna take our rectangle one. I'm gonna fold it in half. Then I'm gonna fold it like this and then fold it back and back like that. So it's like fold it like that. Then we're gonna go in with the skewer right from the top and go in straight and push right through. And we're gonna push it about, you know, this much and push this down and just create just a little bit of room in between, but not so much. And then I have some karet duck. So this is a duck that we use to make tteokbokki, right? So this is optional. You don't have to add this, but I'm gonna add one piece at the end and you want to soak this in cold water for about a good 10-15 minutes so it's easier for the skewer to go in all the way through and there you have it pretty huh i mean you could get kind of skewer them with any combination you want you know so for this long one i'm just going to make it into like a stick you just go straight through not all the way through i mean like that and for this one, we'll start with the cut it duck first. And then this is an odd shape, but you know, just make it fun. And just go in halfway like that. And then the other side, come through. And then this little ball shape one, just add it at the end like that. Pretty cute. <laughs> Using a wide, shallow pot like so, we're gonna start building our hot pot. And to this, we're gonna add the radish that we took out from our stock pot earlier. Then in the center, we're gonna add our half of the small onion that we chopped up earlier. Now this part's optional, but you can add one spicy red pepper or green pepper. This is to add that tucked in spicy taste to our hot pot. So what I would do is just make slits like that so that the hot oil from within releases into our broth without the seeds coming out and making our broth look messy. Add the pepper right here to one side. Here I have two packages of the frozen udon noodles. Put it in a strainer. Then I just want you to lightly rinse it in hot running water, just for about like 30 seconds, just to loosen it all up a little bit. Then just shake it a little bit. Then we're gonna take our noodles and just place it right here, right in the center, right above the onions. Then we're just gonna tuck in our skewered fish cakes like that. I mean, you could put it in however way you like. Ooh, that looks so good already. And we need three Napa cabbage leaves called pechu. You wanna cut the end off and just cut them into small bite-sized pieces. And two scallions. Put the Napa cabbage pechu on both sides here and here, and then the scallions, we'll just wedge it kind of here. And the shiitake mushrooms that we cooked earlier, we'll put it right here. And to make our dipping sauce for our fish cake, we're gonna take a quarter cup of our broth, add it to here. Then we're gonna add one tablespoon of yangjoganjang, that's all-purpose soy sauce. Then half teaspoon of brown sugar. Then I want you to mix it so that the sugar dissolves. We're gonna add just like one tablespoon of minced scallion, just the green part only, like that. And I want you to remember that this dipping sauce is gonna be a little bit on the saltier side, but it goes so well with our cooked fish cakes. It's so good together. Now you can make having your fish stew more fun by having it at table side using a portable stove grill like so. Here's the butane, make sure it's locked in. Close the lid, then press lock like that. And then turn the heat on to high. Then place our pot like that. And then all you have to do is pour your broth. I'm adding one liter and make sure to leave room at the rim so we have room for the broth to kind of boil over. So cook this until everything starts boiling on high heat. So look at that. In less than five minutes on high heat, you should be hearing this lovely, delicious bubbling sound. I want you to take some of the broth and just spread the love. <laughs> and basically this is done. 
Because the fish cakes are already cooked and deep fried, you know, they don't really require cooking other than reheating. You know, all the bok choy and the scallions will add more delicious flavor to our final broth. As the broth reduces, you could also add more broth to it too. Now, this is optional. This is sukkat, crown daisies. You could add this as a pretty garnish and it just adds a nice fresh herb taste to our broth like that at the end. Ooh la la, now it looks super special. We're gonna lower our heat to about medium low, like so, and basically start eating. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited, I'm so excited. All right, so you always have to start with the broth, right? Oh, I cannot explain in words how delicious this broth is. It's just amazing. It's really like seafood, but it's different from your ordinary seafood broth. It's like soul satisfying. Literally our fish cake stew, omuk tang or omuk jeonggul or omuk gummul, you know, they're all the same. Is our Korean humble, but so satisfying comfort food. The broth takes you to heaven, like food heaven right away. Then the next item to eat is our fish cake skewers. Oh, that looks delicious. And with our duck at the end. <laughs> everyone gets their own little small portion of the dipping sauce and everyone just needs very little because this dipping sauce is made to be salty so you only want to just dip the tip and then you go in. You go in for the kill. <laughs> I could probably eat about three or four. <laughs> mm. Mm. The duck, the rice cake is awesome. Mm. Okay, so this is not something you want to eat on your first date because you just have to eat it the way you're supposed to eat it. Just devour it. And then you just start digging right in. So. I love sukkah, so I'm gonna put some sukkah in my bowl and our noodles, look at that. <gasps> our noodles, our udon noodles. Then a little bit of our scallions. And you know what, I didn't add any black peppers because the broth already has this lovely peppery smell and taste to it. And our udon noodles, ooh, love it. The noodles are drenched in our amuk broth. Oh, wow. Whatever noodles you add in here is still gonna taste good if you can't get udon noodles, but so flavorful. Okay, and then you go in for the kill. You have to take your bowl and you drink it straight from the bowl or in a cup, literally. Ugh. When it comes to eating noodles in Korean cuisine culture, it is absolutely okay to slurp your noodles, just don't be obnoxious about it. And two, it is absolutely okay to pick up your bowl and drink the broth from the bowl. It's like compliments to the chef when you enjoy the broth that way as opposed to just spooning it. Oh my God, I think I could put my face in this pot and just like go to town, which I will do after I turn off the camera. You know what's calling me? Soju, soju, soju. <laughs> when it comes to having delicious soups and stews and noodle soups, soju is such a great friend. It just takes it to another level of like food happiness for me, for me at least. Cheers, everyone. Uh, just don't drink the flavor, just don't. Now, if you're interested in learning more Korean soups and stews and noodles, make sure to go to youtube.com slash modern pepper, click on the playlist tab, and you'll see a tab for soups and stews and a separate tab for Korean noodle dishes. I will see you there. I wanna thank you so much for watching today. And if you enjoyed watching today's video, as always, I would greatly, greatly appreciate it if you would click on that thumbs up icon and make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that we can make more Korean dishes together. 여러분 오늘 재밌게 보셨으면 꼭 좋아하는 버튼과 구독 버튼도 눌러주세요. 다음 영상에서 꼭 뵙겠습니다. 감사합니다. All right, folks, I will see you in one of the videos you see right here.